Hello everyone, welcome to a new lecture. In this video, we are going to explore igneous textures. Texture is an important property because it reveals a great deal about the environment in which the rock or the igneous rock is formed. So, what are igneous textures? Well, igneous textures are a description of size, shape, and arrangement of the mineral grains within an igneous rock. So, based on the size, the shape, and the arrangement of the mineral grains that you have on your igneous rock, patterns of textures emerge and based on these patterns or based on these textures we can know about the environment in which the rock was formed there are three factors that affect igneous textures and they are rate of cooling amount of silica and amount of dissolved gases so rate of cooling is extremely important because the faster your rock or your igneous rock cools the smaller your grains are so if you have a rock or if you have magma that cools on the surface and it cools very rapidly the grains or the crystals that develop in this rock will be extremely small but if your magma or if your rock cools down over a period of long time over sometimes millions of years then the crystals that develop in the igneous rock will be large because they have enough time to grow and to crystallize so the faster you cool the smaller your grains are and the slower you cool down the bigger your grains or your crystals are amount of silica also affects igneous textures and amount of dissolved gases we will look at these and how they affect igneous textures in more detail so how many types of igneous textures we have or what are some igneous textures well we have quite few igneous textures we have aphantic igneous textures we have phanertic igneous textures we have prophyritic we have glassy we have pyroclastic and we have pigmatic igneous texture so let's look at each of these in more detail the first one aphantic or fine grained actually aphantic if you split the word a means not and fanner means visible so basically this rock contains crystals that are not visible this rock or this kind of igneous rock that contains authentic textures form at the surface or as small intrusive masses within the upper crust where cooling is relatively rapid we said that when cooling is rapid your grains or your crystals become small so when cooling of magma happens near the surface or on the surface it interacts with the weather or the atmosphere and cooling becomes really fast therefore you get grains that are extremely small and the igneous rocks that contain these kind of structures are called authentic crystals in authentic texture are not distinguishable by the naked eye so the minerals do not have time to form large crystals examples of authentic igneous rocks include basalt andesite and rhyolite this is an example of basalt and as you can see the grains are extremely small again since the rock was cooled down very rapidly another igneous texture that we have is phanetic igneous textures or coarse grained igneous textures this rock or these igneous rocks that contain these textures have crystals that are clearly visible these rocks crystallize or cool down slowly sometimes over millions of years below the earth's surface this type of rocks are also referred to as plutonic or intrusive magma that is cooling slowly and over long period of time will form large crystals so in the previous slide we said fanner means visible this one is phonetic or coarse grain texture since the grains that you have or the crystals that you have in the rock are visible and they are big example of phonetic texture would be olivine diorite and granite as you can see the green crystals that you have here are olivine and they are big because they were cooled down over a very long period of time the next type of igneous textures that we have is vascular vascular textures are a texture that you can find in volcanic rocks and they are characterized by or they contain many vesicles the vesicles are small cavities formed by the expansion of bubbles or gas or steam during the solidification of the rock so these rocks contain gas or steam and when this gas and steam expanded they created these vesicles in the rock they are basically holes in the rock that represent expanding gases so vascular textures 
are those textures that has voids left by gas bubbles that escape as lava solidifies. An example of a vascular texture or rock that contains vascular texture would be pumic or scoria. This is an example of scoria and as you can see you have a lot of holes and vesicles that represent expanding gas and steam. The next type of igneous textures that we have is prophyritic igneous textures. Prophyritic igneous textures is a mix of ground mass microscopic crystals with some large crystals. The large crystals in prophyritic rocks are referred to as phenocrysts, pheno meaning show and crest meaning crystals, whereas the matrix of the smaller crystals is called the ground mass. So this is an example of prophyritic igneous textures. And as you can see, you have very small or very fine grained material that is called ground mass and big grained material that is called phenocryst. When you have this mixture between these two, you get a prophyritic igneous texture. An example of prophyritic igneous texture would be andesite and rhyolite. The next type of igneous texture that we have is glassy, and glassy is very straightforward. Glassy textures or vitreous textures occur during some volcanic eruption when the lava cools down so rapidly that crystallization cannot occur. And they are a result of when unordered ions are frozen in place before they are able to unite into an orderly crystalline structure. The result is a natural glass with few or no crystals. So as you can see, this is an example of obsidian that has a glassy texture. This glassy texture is a result of rapid cooling where the ions are not able to unite and create crystals. Therefore, they freeze and they form this kind of glassy texture. The next type of igneous texture that we have is pyroclastic igneous texture or fragmented. Pyroclastic igneous textures are formed from the consolidation of individual rock fragments ejected during explosive volcanic eruptions. So when you have fragments ejected during explosive volcanic eruptions and they mix with the powdered material, they create pyroclastic or fragmented textures. An example of pyroclastic or fragmented igneous texture would be rhyolite brescia. And this is an example of rhyolite brescia. As you can see, you have ejected fragments mixed with the powdered material when they got solidified. The last type of igneous texture that we have is pygmatic. Pygmatic igneous texture is a coarse grained igneous rock in which most of the crystals are larger than one centimeter. Pigmatites contain large crystals of quartz, feldspar, and muscovite. The large crystals in pegmatite do not result from inordinately long cooling histories, but rather they are the consequence of a fluid-rich environment that enhances crystallization. So when you have, or in the previous lectures, we said that if you have big crystals, that's a result of long periods of cooling, but in pegmatites, they are not. These big crystals that you have, mostly of quartz, feldspar, and muscovite, are a result of fluid-rich environments that enhanced crystallization. And with this, we come to the end of our lecture. So to recap the whole lecture, 